In our previous episode, we learned about reflection and how plane mirrors work. Now, this spoon, we can see our face in it, we can see reflection of other objects. It's like a mirror, but it is not plane. It is spherical. It looks like a part of a sphere. So, spherical. This kind of mirror is called spherical mirror. Now, front side of this mirror, the surface is curved inward. Such spherical mirror are called concave mirror. Concave. And the other side of the spoon, it is bent outward. Mirror whose reflecting surface curved outward, they are called convex mirror. Convex. Now, in plane mirror, we always see straight image, upright image. But in front side of spoon, that is the concave side, we generally see upside down image, that is inverted image. This is because spherical mirror works in a different way. A spherical mirror can be imagined as a part of a sphere, right? The center of the sphere is called center of curvature, generally denoted by capital C. It is not part of mirror imaginary point but it is very important the radius of that sphere is called radius of curvature now center of the reflecting surface it's called pole this point is on the mirror right in the middle the imaginary straight line that connect pole and center of curvature it's called principal axis all these elements are very important let's see how Rays parallel to principal axis when fall on a concave mirror, they converge at a point means rays meet at a point on principal axis. That point is the principal focus of that concave mirror. And when such parallel rays fall on convex mirror, they diverge. But if we extend them backward, they meet at a virtual point. So, it appears as if those rays are coming from that virtual point. That virtual point is the principal focus of that convex mirror. Principal focus of convex mirror is a virtual point. The distance between pole and the principal focus is called focal length, denoted by small f. This is the most important element. As you can see here, r is equal to 2f means radius of curvature is twice of focal length now look very closely why these elements are so important say there is an object a b in between f and c on the principal axis a ray is coming from point a this ray is parallel to principal axis so after reflection it will pass through principal focus now this ray it will reflect back following same path because this ray is actually perpendicular to mirror. Remember this, ray passing through center of curvature or directed in the direction of center of curvature always reflect back along the same path. So these elements are very important to guess the path of reflected ray. Now we can see that both the rays meet at a point, point A dash. This point is the image of the point A. Same way, images of other points between A and B is formed between A dash and the principal axis. Means we get an inverted image. So this is how we draw a basic ray diagram. In next episode, we will explore more and understand how to draw ray diagram for any position of the object. Till then, take care.